Hello, my name is Joe and welcome to another edition of Joe's Technology. Today I'm unboxing a refurbished computer. Refurb computers are handy for saving money while being able to uh, get um, productive machines that you can make use of. As you can see, Snow is already interested in this one, probably because he knows this is the cat computer. It will be used to process all of the cat videos on the Snow the Wonder Cat channel. So let's take a look and see what's inside here. Okay, got the tape off. Let, let's see what's... Whoops, I thought I had all the tape off. Um, it's funny because I, I took the tape off specifically to avoid having to slice through the stuff on camera. Well, it looks like they did a nice job in here. Packaged up like it's in a new computer. Now, if you're curious, this is an HP 6200 Pro and it is... Um, I was interested in it because it has an i5-3100 and the whole machine was around $250 US. So that's actually not a bad price for a quad core computer. Oh. Let's see. I'm trying to do this one handed here. Uh, whoops, oh, that plastic's not going to support anything. Uh, you know what, here, let me go ahead and pause this. <laughs> Okay, so I got the computer out, and this is what it comes with. Came with a, well, computer, power cable, a keyboard, and a mouse. Uh, pretty no frills. The interesting part is it also comes with Windows 7 Professional, but it actually is annotated as Windows 7 Professional 4 Refurb PC. So Microsoft will know, based on the license, that this is a refurb when it is activated. That's okay. Um, I just was surprised, to be honest, I had never known before that there was an actual uh, refurb skew of Windows 7. <laughs> so uh, I'll fire this thing up and put it to work. So before I put the cat computer to work, I had to take a look on the inside. And I have to admit, I'm a little surprised at what I discovered. Look at this case. There is not a speck of dust inside this thing. Not one little speck, not on the power supply, not on the fans, nothing. I mean, I was expecting a computer which had been leased out to some company, probably saw three, four years of service, maybe five, you know, judging by the age of, of this uh, system, and uh, then sent back at the end of the lease agreement and is now being resold on the secondary market. But, I mean, you look at this case, you know, here, here's the plate that I took off. Again, not a mark on it, well, except for a little bit of dust. Um, I don't think this thing was ever sold. I have a feeling that this is a surplus <laughs> HP 6200 Pro that um, never uh, managed to be sold. And as a result, I ended up with a new computer. It just happens to have been sitting on a shelf for five or six years. Um, so I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces. I, I thought I'd make do with... Uh, a crummy old computer because it was cheap, but here, what a bonus. Uh, so sometimes you get lucky with refurbs, which is unusual for me. Normally I have terrible luck. Uh, one bit of bad news though, and I had suspected this, is the power supply. The power supply is only a 250 watt power supply and it has proprietary connections. Very sad face. The reason is, is that if you were thinking of making this into like a gaming computer or something else, Usually power is an issue. Well, this, this power supply is only 250 watts. So it's not enough to power any kind of modern, you know, uh, graphics processing unit. Any of the big GPUs. You could probably get away with something that is board powered, like a 750 Ti or something like that. But that would probably be about the extent of it. So if you're thinking about uh, a refurbished computer for uh, to make it into a gaming system this is not the model that you're looking for there are models out there that you can uh, replace the power supplies and those are the ones you you would probably prefer to this one but unfortunately the proprietary power connections make this one a poor candidate uh, for a little inexpensive uh, gaming system So here we are, side by side with the transcoding computer. The cat computer is coming to life for the first time. It'll probably be a while since it's a Windows 7 machine. You can imagine all the updates it has to download. 
Uh, I'm going to be here for... Well, you know what? I'll just let the cat computer run overnight. And uh, eventually, it'll get everything updated. Okay, so here we are. The cat computer is processing its first cat video. Now, this computer is not going to process them very quickly. It's designed to just sit in the corner and chew on these things. I knew when I got this computer that it wouldn't be the fastest thing in the universe. In fact, initially it didn't work at all. Um, what I had to do was I had to add a video card to it. Because by default, the video card that, uh, well, basically it's using the integrated uh, graphics on the uh, CPU, just doesn't cut it. I mean, we, we need to be able to run at least DirectX 9. And the whammy is this power supply. Since it's proprietary, I'm stuck at 250 watts. And there's nothing I can do about that. And everything, including something as mild as a, a GeForce uh, GT220, which is supposed to be the minimum specs, that they're really just recommended specs uh, for face rig, you know, in order to get smooth uh, video recording, even that uses uh, 300 watts, or at least that's what NVIDIA recommends. So I didn't want to tax the, the power supply unit and burn it up. So I dug in my box and I found this old Pegatron card, which um, it's basically the, um, here, let's see, matter of fact, I think I have the information on it. I should have gotten this before I did this, but <laughs> um, I believe it's the equivalent of a Radeon HD3450. This is just like a generic off-brand. It actually came originally with a Dell. I ripped it out and stuck a better card in there, but I didn't throw it away. And what's nice about this card is, is that uh, it's designed to run with low-powered power supply units, like the one that came in a Dell. And, you know, it's able to run DirectX 9, which is the minimum that FaceRig needs. So I tried running FaceRig before, and all it did was crash because there was no DirectX uh, capability. Now, and, you know, it, again, it told me I couldn't use DirectX 11. I switched it to 9, and this uh, old card is able to do it. Now this is going to be a punishing test. Um, I've taken a pre-recorded video file from the big red computer and put it in here and set this thing to the highest settings just to see how long it will take to chew through it. And it's only gone through, let's see, there's one frame. <laughs> so we're on frame eight and let's see how long does it take. Oh, it's going to be a while. Frame nine. Notice that the frame count says that we have to get to 19,000 frames. This is going to be here for a while. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see whether or not this ends up being too slow for my needs. Um, but uh, I can let this run all night. The good thing is that it has a low wattage uh, power supply unit. The transcoding computer, which is I'm borrowing all the plugs because I didn't bother to actually plug this thing in. I just wanted to make sure it worked. Now that it does, I'll go ahead and get another set of cables for the transcoding computer. So this can just be dedicated to face rig, and that way I don't have to tie up the transcoding computer with this kind of stuff. And meanwhile, Big Red can continue to do the things that it does. And so, uh, welcome to the family, cat computer. I'm looking forward to seeing the kind of videos that we get out of you. It'll probably take a while, but um, maybe, maybe it'll be worth it. <laughs> See you next time.